Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy of LA Wave Options and welcome to this edition of Trade Finder, our free educational service where we take you behind the scenes of the technical analysis system that I utilize in order to identify trades that are worthy to send out to our subscribers as actual alerts. If you're new to the service, please take a moment to go and look at some of the past recordings. They're not time sensitive, they're educational based, and each chart is a little bit different and there could be something to glean from even some of the older recordings. Whether you're new with us or whether you've been with us for a while, I got something really important to share with you this week, so let's take a look. So here's our trade ledger at LA Wave Options, and the trade that I wanted to review with you for this recording is down at trade number 140. So here's trade number 140. It was in our impulse strategy and it was on Nike. And the initial trade was a call debit spread. And I say initial trade because this position involved an adjustment. We do a lot of adjustments at LA Wave Options because I'm a believer that we don't necessarily just need to absorb a loss if the pattern still warrants staying with it and continuing in the position to eventually win, which we did here. You can see we were in the trade a total of 45 days and returned almost an 80% return on capital. So let's click on the trade and we'll see the particulars of the entry, what happened with the adjustments and the exit. So clicking on the entry, each one of our alerts has a chart with it. And you can see that the alert came out initially with a wave three on Nike that was expected to continue to the upside. The DMI is one of the confirming indicators that I utilize, not the only one, but a primary one. And it was showing that this was indeed a strong wave three and that the upward movement was expected to continue. Now, eventually we were gonna hit a wave five target of right around 100. And that's important as well because it's also a psychological level. Just the round numbers, $100, $200 a share, $1,000 a share, etc. They don't have any necessarily technical significance, but they do have psychological uh, significance in the fact that they just seem to act as magnets and draw the stock up there. So that was the initial chart look. And based on the pricing of the options, we were entering on October 21st, and it was a December long call spread, buying the 97.5 call and selling the 105 call in order to bring the total amount down. And it brought it down to $2.22 uh, per contract and we initially sent out two contracts. So everything looks great. And then we get to the point where things changed. This is the part of trading that you can't expect or you can't forecast. And it was the CEO of Nike unexpectedly resigned. And so that sent the stock moving to the downside. So everything had been great. Then you get an unexpected news event like the CEO resigning and the stock moves to the downside. However, look what happened. There was some technical significance to this as, as we moved back down, we filled this gap. Well, obviously, a move down of that magnitude uh, is not going to be so good for a long call spread. So the point was, let's go ahead and make the adjustment here. Remember when you're in a long call spread, buying a call is bullish, selling a call is bearish. The reason that you create a spread is the premium that you bring in from the call you're selling helps to one, offset the cost of the long call, but it also helps to offset volatility, etc. But when the stock moves to the downside, a short call actually loses value. Now, we bought a long call for a value. We sold a short call for a value. So as the stock goes down, the value or the premium in that short call starts to wane. And that gave us the opportunity to let's go ahead and close out those short calls. So we buy those back. They were only six cents. So it costs next to nothing to buy those back. So now basically we're left with the two long calls that we initially had in place, but we do have a time consideration here. So the other thought process was, well, in addition to buying back the short calls in the original spread, let's go, add, go ahead and add two more of the long calls. Now the long calls obviously had lost value as well with the stock going down. So we were able to go ahead and buy two more for 58 cents each. So it's only a total of $116 investment to add two more calls. So how many calls do we have now? Well, now we have four, right? So we have four calls 
and we still are at the December expiration. Well, Nike decided to turn around and move back to the upside, which was the original move expected. And when I go and show you the chart, you'll see that we had some gaps, which are always concerning when you have a move to the upside because when are those gaps going to get filled if you've heard any of my recordings you know gaps get filled we don't know the timing but we know eventually they're going to get filled well we haven't reached our target yet right we originally talked about not only this wave five target around 100 but the psychological level of 100 but we chose at that point in time to go ahead and close the position out well, why? Why would we close it out now? Well, here's another thing to consider is the fact that volatility, implied volatility in the options is extremely important. With the vertical nature of this move, the fact that the stock went straight up, it spikes the volatility. And you can see that red line on the top chart is showing you the implied volatility of the shorter term options, 30 days or less. And we had December options. So now we're uh, into the first week of December and we uh, have to uh, be mindful of the time that we have left in the trade. Little bit of time left that we could have held, but we've got this nice spike in volatility. Now, one of the things that's really neat about this program, Profit Source, is you can show the volatility of all the different options, the time frames that are available. So this blue line is the longer term options. Now, notice that we have a what would be known as volatility skew here because the volatility the implied volatility is much higher in the shorter term options than it is in the longer term so with this movement with this spike up in the stock those shorter term options which happen to be the ones that we have we have december options so they're less than 30 days have spiked to the upside so rather than waiting and hoping that we one break above this resistance level to go up and hit that psychological level. Three, avoid coming back and filling these gaps all before December expiration, the third week in December, seemed to be an awful lot to ask. So the prudent thing to do is to go ahead, close the position out and take the gain. And that's why we made the decision to go ahead, close the position out and take that nearly 80% gain prior to expiration. And looking at the last couple of trading days since then, we've gone sideways at this area of resistance where the previous three was. And so guess what happens to volatility when the stock begins to go sideways? It comes back down. So at least at this point in time, it looks like the prudent thing to do. Now we can revisit this on the third Friday and see where the options would have been priced, where the stock was. But at this point in time, we followed the rules of trading understanding the importance that implied volatility plays in the world of options. If you're going to be a successful options trader, you must understand the Greeks. You must understand implied volatility, or you have a very small chance of being a successful options trader. So I hope you found that helpful. Look forward to talking to you again next time. Take care, everybody.